Hi there everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here, another episode of Magic 2015. So for today's Friday Night Magic, I'll be playing with a Demir discard deck, so I think I'm going to keep this hand. It's not too bad, we've got to think twice, a couple of lands, a Vapor Snag and a Brain Maggot, plus a Mind Rot, so uh, not too bad at all. So yeah, the whole point of this deck is to force my opponent to discard plenty of lands so that at the end I can use cards like Denovra Horror to keep bouncing back um, kind of creatures, forcing him to only be able to play one card a turn, things like that. So I've also got Shieldred as a kind of a, a finisher right at the end as well. So I think we're going to play, let's play an island here. And I don't want to play Brain Maggot yet, so I'm just going to go through to my... Uh, skip my creature phase. I'd rather save this for later on when he's only got kind of like one card left and I can play this and a Denovra Horror or something like that. Or maybe when he's like kind of almost ready to play some good stuff. So I'm going to play a Think Twice here. He's not going to counter a Think Twice, surely. Why would you negate a Think Twice? I don't I don't really care. He's All he's done is negated a Think Twice so I can literally just bounce it back from my graveyard anyway, but uh... So we are going to play Swamp here. Do have the dead weight as well for any creatures that you might play. Could play Mind Rock. Uh, he's tapped out, so it might be a good time to play this really, uh, as it is a sorcery. So we'll just skip combat. And he's tapped out, so let's force him to discard a couple of cards. Just because I don't like him, because he made me discard my Think Twice, or negated the Think Twice. It seems like a really stupid move to make. Um, I mean, I didn't need the card draw. I was just doing it because I, like, it was the only play I could make. So, very random. And he just let himself tapped out, so I could force through the mind rock quite easily. See, so now he's not tapped out, and I'm probably going to play Liliana Spectre, which he might counter. See if he does. So he's going to counter the Liliana Spectre. He's going to nullify it even. So this guy's almost tapped out. This guy's almost like emptied his hand out already. That's absolutely crazy. I don't know. I don't even know what he's done yet. He's just countered. So he's done absolutely nothing. We're just going to carry on playing land until we can work up to Shieldred, of course. Um. So we're just going to skip combat. We're just going to play the Think Twice uh, during my off phase. What's he going to do? He is going to Think Twice himself. Fair enough. Why would you... Oh, yeah, it's on my turn. I was like, why are you doing that now? It's like, oh, yeah, because it's my turn. Of course, it's, yeah, it's my end step. That's the best time to play it. So we're going to flash back my Think Twice, which he can't counter. Oh, no, he can counter it. I did not realise that. And I've, I've, I've thought because it was already in the graveyard that you couldn't counter it, but turns out you can. So how close are we to getting Shieldred? Let me try and figure this out. We've got six already so we're almost at shieldred already which is pretty crazy um neither of us have anything on the battlefield yet though so i mean i've got my i've got my brain maggot but not really much point playing it right now if i don't need to so this could be a long game i'm expecting a long game right now So uh, I suppose it's a good time really, to ask what the to ask the comment question of the video. So uh, I'm going to ask, what is your favourite colour uh, in terms of when it comes to jewels? So, um, for example, a lot of people love blue just because oh, I don't want to play shielded right now because that'd be a very silly idea with him having five cards and being completely untapped. So uh, yeah, I, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave that there for now. So yeah, what is your favourite colour? Um, I quite like white. I don't know why. I just like being able to play lots of weenies. I like the angel cards, things like that. So I'm probably going to say white is possibly one of my favourite colours. See, now he's going to do something. What's he going to play? Think twice. Okay. So he's got a whole handful. I really could do with a misnomia, which I think is in this deck. Force him to discard everything but one card would be pretty crazy. He's not playing anything, so he's just got a full hand right now. I mean, I'm, I could try and play a Liliana Spectre here. See if force him to tap out. Is he going to counter it? I'm guessing he is. He's got a whole hand. Let's see what he plays. Dissolve. Okay, so there goes the Dissolve. 
But now I'm wondering, can I play the Brain Maggot here? It's tempting to, to try and play it, try and see what he's got, at least, at least see what he's got in his hand and see if he's got any more counters open. He has not, so let's see what he's got. So this is going to give me a good idea of what I'm up against. So I've got two Void Snares, a Void's End and two Tower Rans. Ooh, so, um, interesting. So at least he's got no more counters, which I suppose is the main thing. He does have lots of Tower Rans though, so I'm going to nick, uh... Let's nick one of his Tower Rans, just because that way I can dead weight the other one, I suppose. At least I know he's got no more, um, he's got no more counter, which is good. That was, that was, that was the one main thing, which means I know that, unless he's drawn one this turn, he's now tapped out, as you can see, so I can dead weight that. And he's going to Void Snare my Brain Maggot, fair enough. So he gets a 2-2. Two, two. So I could do one more mana here. Perfect. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to dead weight that 2-2 two, two, and then play my shield rid as well, I think. Goodbye to you. And then we're going to play shield rid as well. See, so yeah, I know he can bounce this, but I think it goes through to his turn. He has to sacrifice that Drake, which is cool. Goodbye, Drake, which is why I did that. Wouldn't, wouldn't really have mattered which way around I did that, but I want to get rid of the tower round mostly. See, so yeah, I know he can bounce this because he had lots of bounce in his hand. But I can now just keep playing it, which is cool. So I know, unless he's drawn into a counter, but he's used up um, a negate, a dissolve, and a nullify. So he could have quite a lot left. So he's going to play Void Snares, fair enough, I was expecting that. Excellent, this is going to allow me to play Brain Maggot and Shieldred, so let's play... Let's get through combat. Let's play Brain Maggot first, unless he's got a counter open, in which case that would also be good. Let's let him waste the counter on the Brain Maggot. No, he's going to play an Inspiration, interesting. Why would you draw more cards for me to then, re like, remove one from play? Let's see what he's got. So he's got Elixir of Mortality, Triton Shorestalker, Think Twice, Voyager's End, and Tower Rans. So I'm thinking goodbye Voyager's End. As that is all his bounce gum. And then we also play Shieldred as well. So he doesn't have any creatures for me to sack off using my Shieldred. I really could do with a misnomer, misnomia still, though, would be quite nice. I do have Liliana Spectres coming up, which is quite nice. Uh, force him to discard at least two cards. Here comes an Elixir Immortality, so he could use that to shuffle his graveyard back in if he wanted to. So he's done nothing else this turn. Confirm, we'll get the Liliana Spectre back. Force him to discard a card. Let's see what he tosses. So he has gone for the Triton Shorestalker. Fair enough. We'll also play the Demir Guildgate. Get more land down. It's never a bad thing. Let's attack with both of these. I don't think he's got anything that can remove the Brain Maggot. Nope, he's just think thinking twice. He wants more cards. So he's almost dead at this point. I think we've got a good good thing going with the Shieldred. I think I've done the right plays here. He's got nothing to uh, nothing to discard, nothing to sacrifice even. And he's playing Time Warp. Interesting. So he's just looking for more cards, basically. So he can't do anything this turn. So that would again force him to sacrifice a creature, but he has none. More land for him. That's all he drew, I think. I don't think he's got. I don't think he's got many other options here. He's got a Triton Shorestalker. So let's just vapor snag you before you can do anything. So yeah, let's choose another Liliana Spectre. 
might force him to discard. Don't know what he's going to discard here. Could be anything. Oh, we've got my own tower around. Very nice. Awesome. It's always a good thing. So we shall swing in with you and you. Can that not block? Can't be blocked. Oh, it can block, but it can't be blocked, I see. It's gonna it's gonna, it's gonna be sacrificed at the beginning of his, beginning of his uh, turn anyway, so uh and we've also got the truck we've also got the tower round as well, you know, just to really kick it in his crotch. It's like you you've not been able to make any of your own tower round stick, but here's my one. Welcome to the battlefield. Ah, Royal Elemental, so that's got landfall. Don't really care, as he's pretty much dead anyway. Just gonna vapor snag it. Goodbye. Welcome to the tower round. I'm sure we had a tower round. That was really weird. Um, uh, it doesn't really matter at this point because I've just won because I've managed to vapor snag his uh, Royal Elemental. Excellent. And we're just going to swing in with everything just because we can. There we go. Look at that. Wasn't that a beautiful game? Wasn't that exactly the way this deck was made to be played? Yeah, I did not. By the way, I did not come up with this deck myself. I'll explain why in a minute. Okay, so here we are for game number two. Uh, I'm not sure this hand is worth keeping, but I don't know. Maybe it is. I'm going to keep it anyway. Let's give it a go. Many, mostly because I've got the Think Twice and tons of land, which is exactly what I need. So, yeah, let me clarify that last point. I, try, I started making a point and then realised it was the very end of the match, so I'd have to kind of like cut away but yeah so this deck isn't my own creation i ran out of time this week because i was away at the weekend i didn't have time to do all of my other kind of off-camera commitments so ran out of time a little bit so i went digging around uh, no goblins allowed for deck ideas and found this little beauty been really fun i quite like it it's a really interesting idea to um kind of force lots lots of discard on your opponents and then having like end game things such as dinova horror and stuff like that so just gonna play the thing twice here Oh, very nice shielded. That's what we like to see. And we've also got Mind Rot as well. Very nice. So, I am probably going to play that this turn. Just because I'm a git. Let's force him to discard some cards. It's probably more useful later on. But, uh, let's, let's force him to start sacking cards off. Yeah, it's maybe a bit too soon for that. I've just realised that. Because he can just toss away... Uh, at least he got rid of an Angelic Edict, which isn't too bad. Yeah, I just realised that I should have waited till this turn when he possibly played a couple of cards. Yeah, my, my brain isn't working there. It's still first thing in the morning. So we've got the Brimaz. So I basically need to keep this thing kind of away until I can get Shieldred down in three more turns. So I'm thinking maybe Voyages end that. Can I? I can't think twice and Voyages End, so I'm thinking maybe Voyages End this turn. So, do I do it now? I see if he plays anything first. So he's going to play. So he's going to Voyages End that now, so he can't replay it. And we'll have that on top, please. So I can get rid of the Mentor of the Meek next turn. No, yep, yeah, Mentor of the Meek next turn. There we go, so we're going to play the Swamp. So we've got five, so we've got two turns before we've got Shieldred down, uh, which is good. So let's go through to combat, which we'll skip. And we'll just play a dead weight on top of that Mentor of the Meek. Goodbye. So I think Voyage is ending that Brimaz there was like the perfect play, because he can't swing in with it this turn just gone. So I get to play another... Um, another land this turn and then by the time he's uh, yeah then Shieldred is going to come down not long after that so let's also think twice as well we'll flash it back there we go this is all going rather well so far which is worrying <laughs> and we got another Voyages end so I could even flash I could even uh, also bounce it back again which could be quite hilarious um, So next turn we've got Shieldred coming down, which is good. So he's going to play Raise the Alarm. Okay, interesting. 
See if he does anything this turn. And I'm just going to bounce you back again. Goodbye. Oh, I'll have that on top, please. It's another horror. Very nice. Just, you know, have our two, our, two of our win cons come down in the next couple of turns is always nice. And then he's going to play Bane Slayer. Interesting. So I am going to play the Swamp here, and then I think I may bounce that back using the Denovra Horror. Um, or do I play Shieldred? Because that would basically then... No, I'm going to play Denovra Horror this turn, I think. Bounce it back. Hmm. Or do I play Shieldred? Because it's going to start getting rid of his tokens as well. I, mean, I can always bounce Denovra Horror back next turn. Uh, sorry, I can always use Denovra Horror next turn. Yeah, I think Shield is slightly better here. Unless he's got like an Angelic Edict in hand, in which case I may cry a little bit. But at least it's going to force him to sack off one of his soldiers. Because this is pretty crazy. That's a horror, not a demon or a dragon, so I can use abilities on that from my Dinovra Horror. Beastmaster, interesting decision there. So he's going to swing with the 5-5, five, five. that gets a token. So I lose 5 health, he gets 5, he gets five health. So I'm going to get this turn. Ooh, Tower Round, very nice. That could be useful later on. We are just going to swing in with the 6-6 six, six, though. Which he will probably block. Nope, he's going to let that go through. Interesting. And then play Denovra and bounce back the 5-5. Five, five. Goodbye. What's he going to play? Can't have too much here. He's only got two mana open. There we go. I could do something with... Uh, make. I could do with like a spell or something to start getting this tower and sky summoner working. So he tossed away the Brimaz, which I thought he might. And he's going to play the Raise the Alarm. So that will force him to sack off one of these. And then he's going to Angelic Edict my shield with him, I'm guessing. Yep. So he's swinging with both of them. He gets two tokens on Beastmaster. He's going to block you. So that's really annoying he had an Angelic Edict in hand. That's basically screwed me over to no end. Oh, we do have Rune Scarred, though. Very nice. Um... So, I'm going to swing in with Denovra, and then we're going to play Runes Guard. That does require seven tokens, yeah, so he's nowhere near that yet. So let's play Runes Guard, and let's see what we want. I'm trying to think what I might want to draw. Possibly another Denovra Horror would be quite good. Or even a Brain Maggot. Ooh, that could be tasty. Um, or Mind Rot. Do I have the land open for it? Not yet, but, um, no, I think Brain Maggot might be quite a good one here. No, 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 it's not that useful. Ah, come on. Get, get, get off. I want Denova Horror. Where, where's it gone? There, there it is. Confirm. I want that. I've changed my mind. I want Denovra. Mind Rot wouldn't be no good because all he's going to do is play Bane Slayer this turn. So at least with the Denovra, I can then bounce it back again. So yeah, here comes here, here comes the Bane Slayer back down, which is what I was expecting. And we also get to think twice as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Denovra pre-combat so I can bounce it back now. There we go. Goodbye. He's going... 
There goes Krenko's command. And then what we're going to do is swing in with both of these. There we go. So he's down to five, which is pretty tasty. I mean, I'm almost tempted to think twice now, but I want to make the best use out of my tower and especially for summoning chump blockers against this. Uh, why the hell has he got all these funky protection symbols? Very weird. Um, oh, Miss Miss no, Miss that minor mania. That's monomania. That's what I was looking for earlier, but it doesn't really matter now. Um, I'm gonna swing in with everything. No. Gonna skip my attack there. Let's play Taurand. And then I can't actually play anything. Crap, that was not the best play then. Um So he might get five health, but that's only if he swings in with the Bane Slayer Angel now, but that would then leave him vulnerable next turn. That's gonna summon a little goblin. Which he has to swing in with, which can be easily blocked. Oh crap, he's getting very close to Beastmaster though. Um, okay, so this is where things are going to get a little bit... Oh, hello Vapor Snag. You're, my, you're now my best friend. Um, Okay, so let's Vapor Snag pre-combat, and that should push through enough damage, in theory. So, we'll Vapor Snag you. Then we'll continue on to combat. Attack with all, all four. And then I think that should, in theory, push through enough, especially as it's got the 6-6 six, six in the air. Yes, we did it. Thank God for that. Whew. Two wins out of two. Okay, guys, so here's a quick look at the deck. So in terms of blue cre blue cards, we've got four Vapor Snags for bouncing creatures back and also replaying things such as um, Denovra Horror and Rune Scar Demon. Uh, we've got four Voyager's End to do exactly the same thing. Uh, we, it's, two, it's a mana extra, but you do get to scry as well. We've got Think Twice for digging for all those important cards that we want. We've got a Tauran for if you can play this fairly early, you can start abusing things like Think Twice, Voyager's End, Vapor Snag, Mind Rock to summon little drakes. Didn't really see that, but uh, not the end of the world. We've got Dead Weight for early creature removal, always useful. Brain Maggot for looking at your opponent's hand and forcing them to uh, kind of, you, what you do is you get to look at your opponent's hand, which is always important, and then you also get to take a card from that, put it under Brain Maggot, and it's exiled, which is quite nice. Four Lily Anna Spectres to uh, force my opponent to discard a card which is always nice mind drop to force my opponent to discard even more cards almost made a mistake that on the first game should have waited till a little bit later to kind of make it a little bit more effective but it worked out in the end uh, monomania great if you can if, if your opponent's got a massively full hand this basically just reduces it down to one so if you can synergize this up with a monomania and a brain maggot you've emptied your opponent's hand and then whenever they're playing anything you can basically drop it over horror and then kind of essentially get them to sacrifice it so if they've, if they've got an empty hand with one creature on the board you play the over horror that forces that, that creature back to his hand and then he discards it which is pretty crazy got a shieldred now this is the one one change that i've made from the deck online i took out one of the rune scar demons and put in shieldred because shieldred is amazing you can't not put shieldred in it's just too damn effective um he was discussing whether or not to put it in or not, but I think it's too it's far too good not to include in this deck. It's just the fact that it's kind of forcing your opponent to get rid of like the few creatures that he's able to summon because of all the discard and things like that. And then you're also bouncing back things like Liniana Spectre, which may have been put into the graveyard, and forcing your opponent to discard more creatures. So it's just pure insanity. In terms of the lands, this is what I've changed up as well. He had loads of the tri lands. I don't understand why. I've gone for all the fast lands and the Demir Guild Gates because I just I don't get why you put in so if someone can explain this to me I don't get why he put in things like Arcane Sanctum um Crumbling Necropolis and um what's the other one which is red blue and black um yeah Opulent Palace I don't get why you put in Trilands as opposed to Fastlands but that's just beyond me it must be something some kind of advanced skills but I'll put a description I'll put a 
link to the deck in the description below you guys can judge for yourself but yeah i don't get why you'd use trial lands over fast lands but that's just me or even just the or even just the demir guild gates because they do exactly the same thing there's no cards in this deck which benefit from any of the other colors so eh, i don't know but whatever um yeah so that's going to be the end of the episode for now as always guys don't forget to comment and like if you've enjoyed the episode apart from that thanks for watching and i'll see you next time goodbye